Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and this will be the third video of the entire series that I will be creating for multi-factor authentication server and in this video we are going to check how you can implement MFA or second factor authentication for those applications for which ADFS is acting as an IDP with the help of on-prem multi-factor authentication server. Now Enabling MFA with ADFS or for ADFS can be done in two ways. The first one is either you can install MFA server on the same machine which has ADFS. So that means what? You can use the same box on which you have configured ADFS and you can install MFA server on that particular machine itself. The second option which is available is you can install MFA adapter locally on the ADFS server that means what you can have two servers on which the first one will be the ADFS and the second one we will be using for installing MFA server and then we will be registering the ADFS adapter of MFA on the ADFS server itself so let's consider the first example that let's say I have an ADFS farm which is up and running office 365 has been added as a relying party itself and what we can do now is we can install MFA server on this machine and then we will register the MFA adapter for ADFS. Now we have been working uh, with ADFS from quite some time now and what we know that the option that's actually required to complete MFA is something that has to be listed here. Now this is something which can be accessed by authentication methods. You can you'll click on edit and you'll get this list. Now certificate authentication is something which is the traditional or legacy method which is available with 2012 and 2012 R2 as well. And the option that we see here Azure MFA is moreover referring to the cloud MFA. Now once we will complete the entire process of setting up on-prem Azure MFA server with ADFS, what we will see is a change and that change will be Azure multi-factor authentication server will start getting listed here. This means what? That after installing the ADFS adapter, which is required for MFA, for your on-prem MFA server, we will register it as well and then that particular option will start getting listed here. So this was about the first scenario which we can do there is one more thing uh, there, there is one more way wherein you can implement this and the other way is that you can keep the ADFS server as it is and bring a new server and on that server we will be installing multi-factor authentication server and then we will manually register the MFA adapter on the ADFS machine now the question comes what could be the purpose or what could be the benefit of this that all the applications that are using ADFS as claim provider or all the application for whom ADFS is acting as an identity provider for them you would be able to configure MFA. We all know the power and we all know how to use custom claim rules so let's say you have 10 relying parties and out of which you want second factor authentication to be completed for five relying parties or five applications with the help of custom claim claim rules what we can do is we can implement MFA for only five applications and the rest of the applications will working as it is so one more thing that I would like to suggest that it's better that we should use either 2012 R2 or 2016 and if you go with the second model wherein you have ADFS and MFA server installed on two different machines web service SDK is a component of, of MFA server which has to be installed on the MFA server to achieve this kind of environment now let's go back uh, to my machine and let's start off uh, with installing MFA adapter. So this is the video in which I'm going to talk about the scenario wherein you have ADFS and MFA server installed on the same machine. The setup will be very simple. All you need to do is you have to launch multi-factor authentication server then click on ADFS and then click on install ADFS adapter. This will begin the installation of ADFS adapter but, but before that one more thing that I would like to cover and that is these options. So the first option that you see allow user enrollment. What does this mean that once the user will complete the primary authentication and let's say that user has not completed this proof of process. That means 
setting up second factor authentication, providing your details, either your contact number or using a mobile app. The proof of process for that particular user is not completed. So once that user will complete the primary authentication on the ADFS page on the same authentication request itself, that particular user will be able to complete the proof of process. So for this demo, what I'm doing is I'm checking allow user enrollment and then I'm checking the option which says you can use either phone call or text message. You can also go ahead and check for auth customization if you have or you can also go ahead and check for security questions so these are all the options which are available once the user completes the primary authentication now what I'll do is I have clicked on install ADFS adapter the very first prompt itself will give you the instructions to click on next now there will be no as such code configuration needed the moment you will click on next the installation will get started and once the installation will get completed there is a script that we will be running and what that will result is azure multi-factor authentication server option will start getting listed here Okay, so now uh, since uh, the adapter is installed, what we'll do is we will register the adapter now. And for that, what you can do is you can open PowerShell and go to this location, which is C Program Files Multi-Factor Authentication Server. Now see, even though we have the adapter installed, if we'll refresh this, we'll get removed ADFS adapter. That means what? The ADFS adapter is installed now, but still if I click on edit, I will not get that option listed here because the adapter is still not registered. So what we'll do is we'll go here and run the script of registering the MFA adapter. Once this is completed, you will get the prompt to restart the ADFS service. I'll restart the ADFS service now. I will close the ADFS console. And once the service is started, I'll launch ADFS console again. And after that, what we will be doing is we will be testing the MFA with two kind of users. The first one which has proved up and the other one for which the proof of process is not completed. So now I'm going to launch ADFS management console and here I'll go to authentication methods. And from here, I'm going to enable Azure multi-factor authentication server. Now the moment this option is listed here, I'll click on apply. Okay. And then I will check what is the current access policy configured for my relying party, which is Office 365. Perfect. We have permit everyone and require MFA. That means what? Whenever ADFS will receive any authentication request for Office 365 after completing the primary authentication, the second factor authentication will be initiated for that particular user. Now what I'll do is I'll go to portal.office.com and I'm going to use the account for which the MFA is configured. Now what do I mean by this? that if I go here and search for the account, this particular account has completed the proof of process and it's been set up to SMS one way OTP. So I'll select the same account. Now as per the normal process, I will be redirected to my ADFS. Here I will be submitting my password and after that I should get the option to complete the MFA. So since I've selected the option of text message, I should get a text message right now, which I will be entering here. And once the second factor authentication is completed, I should be landed up to uh, portal.office.com. So 993688. I'll click on sign in and I should land up to portal.office.com. This means what? Since uh, ADFS or since multi-factor authentication server already know how to complete the MFA process or it has the details of uh, completing the MFA process likewise my mobile number so what happened that I received a text message and the MFA is completed now I'll try an account that has not completed the proof of process that means what this work to account if I go ahead and check none of the information is mentioned here so what I'll do is I'll sign in with work to at conceptswork.com and then I'll type in my password once I'm redirected to my ADFS page. Now the expected behavior 
here would be that I should get the option to enroll myself for the MFA service and that's exactly happening here this is because the options that we have selected here that does allow the user enrollment on the ADFS page itself so now let's go back and simply discuss the summary of what all we covered the very first thing that we discussed is how to install ADFS adapter is very simple. If you have MFA server installed on the same machine which has ADFS, just go ahead and click on install ADFS adapter. No prerequisite required. We check the user behavior once we have registered the MFA, we have configured the MFA adapter and we have configured the relying party as well. And if the user is proved up, the MFA will complete as expected. If the user is not proved up, then as per the settings that you have selected on the ADFS adapter page, the user will be prompted to go ahead and get themselves enrolled and submit those details which they might be using for multi-factor authentication. So this was all about this particular video. If you guys have any feedback, suggestions or queries, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. If you have learned anything new, please feel free to subscribe and I welcome your comments. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.